of Amity University. And uh, now we have our speaker, renowned filmmaker, Mr. Kamalishan Mukherjee. Just a few lines, I will just a, a, a brief, brief introduction of Mr. Mukherjee. Mr. M M Mukherjee is, tra is transferred from med medical, medical prax practitioner to filmmaking. And initially he started as theater artist and after that ad filmmaking and then again he joined as film uh, in, in filmmaking uh, to take few names from his filmography that is Chandir Pahar we all know then Amazon of Vision the second one the sequel of possibly if he mentioned its sequel then the sequel of Chandir Pahar and one of my favorite film what which he made that is Megheta Katara based on the renowned filmmaker Ritik Kumar Ghatok now over to you sir Komolda uh, if you can please start. Yeah. Uh, basically, today we are talking about the aesthetics in film. I think I am loud and clear. Isn't that so? Yes, I, I, I think it is. Okay. So, uh, while we'll be uh, discussing about the uh, aesthetics of the film, uh, I would go to a brief history of filmmaking and then uh, uh, very gradually, we'll go into other arts also, just to uh, give an overview of what aesthetics means to me or means to us. First of all, film, according to uh, me, I think that uh, there are three aspects of film. One is the science of film which actually deals with the technical developments of all the equipments that we use while uh, making a film. There are lots of equipments, starting from the pre-production sessions, then the location scoutings, then uh, the styling and fixing the loop, and then, of course, production while we are shooting. There also we have lots of technical helps, technical gadgets. And finally, of course, uh, the post-production. The post-production is definitely based on gadgets mostly. So this gives us the help of science wherever we are incorporating in film. So there is one chapter which is science of film. The next part we can go to the art of film. Why film is considered as an art form. Whether a film is an, at all an art form or not. And if it is an art form, what are the components that makes it a composite art form? Third, I'll come to the commerce of film. Because all three are actually guiding the process of aesthetic expressions of a filmmaker in a film. Commerce of film is definitely a chapter that needs to be discussed because once a film is made, even then, when a film is made, even then, how to distribute the film, how to make the film reach the audience, and how to think of an audience, suppose what we call a target audience, is very necessary in case of filmmaking. I think every filmmaker should be aware of that part also. So the science and art and commerce of film. These three elements guide what we call aesthetics. Now, suppose when we talk about aesthetics, in my opinion, everything is basically aesthetic if it is dealt with whatever we call 
the prowess of an artist. And uh, everything looks beautiful or sounds beautiful if it is coherent with the content of that art form. Now, this concept of aesthetics, probably the analysis of aesthetics. Aesthetics is there in human society, in nature. And from the very beginning of our civilization, it has been an inseparable part of human life. But the analysis of aesthetics probably started in two or three areas in this globe. If we go to our history, definitely India is one of them. Egypt is one of them. China is one of them. And Greece, of course. So in these four parts of the globe, we started defining aesthetics or trying to analyze what aesthetics is. Apart from these cultures which grew in different parts of the world, they were city-based. Apart from that, also a part was contributed by aesthetics that we developed from our folk culture, not only in the civilized urban systems, but also in the outskirts of what we called the towns at that time, the downtowns and the suburbs and even the jungles, they provided this kind of a parallel sense of aesthetics. Probably we should not forget that lot of urban cultural elements which later on actually helped us, which later on uh, those uh, elements which uh, later on got included in our culture, like I can give you an example, the fashion statements that we frequently make now and the fashion statements that are exhibited maybe in Milan, maybe in Paris, maybe in New York today, or even in India today, actually originated from tribal cultures of maybe the Amazons or maybe Africa. The piercings, the body paintings, the different kinds of accessories that are attached to the costumes, different types of makeups, usage of hair colors, all, these all came from the tribal cultural heritage. So different kinds of aesthetic forms are there in life. And when they are applied in art, then art definitely becomes beautiful. In my opinion, whatever we see, yes, that is reality. Sometimes we talk of realism, sometimes we talk of neorealism, sometimes we talk of hyper-realism in today's uh, culture. But what we need to remember is when we are making a film or any kind of art, we are definitely going unreal. Why? Because one, we are always telling stories of 200 years into us, or maybe a story of two minutes into us. So in the temporal scale, we are either stretching or compressing time. Similarly, 
we are traveling in spaces from different spaces to different spaces so automatically what's happening is we are becoming unreal that doesn't happen in real life experience but even after becoming unreal we are trying to tell some facts now the point is art forms they do not only document facts but they also talk about truth so this difference this thin red line that separates facts and truths is the area where any art form depicts life and life becomes highly unreal suppose in the cinema in film when we are seeing film we are seeing film in different aspect ratio that means the length and the breadth of the screen the ratio now when we are seeing anything in our real life it is actually not bound by a frame one second we are trying to focus at different levels we are seeing with a single lens and that lens is panning and tilting in our eye i am saying but when we are making a film we are not using normal lens only we are using wide angle lenses even wide angle lenses with distortions we are using telephoto lenses those telephoto lenses that compress depth so what we are doing is we are trying to reflect reality but we are trying to reflect reality with our own interpretation with our from our own viewpoint and definitely that is not what we see in reality so however real or near real or hyper real a film might be it is all about the content but when aesthetics is concerned definitely we are going unreal and trying to be close to reality as well suppose when we are using this uh, there are different elements used in film as used in poetry suppose uh, metaphors uh cynic dodges then uh, we have similes symbols the index all these things when we are showing in the cinematic language definitely there are de denotative meanings there are connotative meanings we are actually trying to compare what we see in real life and what we are showing and thereby we are somehow alienating ourselves from reality so in my opinion what we say that is it is aesthetics this is aesthetic in real life is not the same whatever is aesthetic on screen and not only in on screen i mean in all kinds of art forms so uh with this introduction i think if we are on the same page regarding this i mean art is always unreal but it is trying to mimic reality art is stating facts but it is actually searching for truth this is the bottom line if we are okay with this then i can go to the original discussion i think the core discussion uh let me first present a couple of uh, pictures and let's start the meeting from there
suppose this is a picture very commonly used picture what can we see definitely we can see an elephant but how many legs that elephant actually has this is what i think art is it is communicating this fact that this is an elephant but if we look at the legs we can see that there is a optical illusion in spite of this optical illusion we are taking it for granted that this is an elephant and correctly drawn elephant but actually it is not the lower part of this elephant is completely different what we see in real life but in spite of that fact that this is not looking like a real elephant we are considering it to be an elephant we all can identify it as an elephant now uh, let us go to uh, any other picture please take a look at these three ladies uh actually your picture is not open the picture is not open no sir we can't see the picture sir we can't see them can you uh, can't see could you see the picture of the elephant no sir we didn't see sir the only okay. the coming in a sir, thumbnail view in front sir okay okay so uh just a moment just a moment uh Can I see it now? Uh, yes, double click the picture so it will. I think double click the pic. Double click on the thumbnail so it will be bigger. So it. it, it no, it, uh, 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 here it's not the thumbnail. It's the full picture. Of the But we can't see. We can't. We can't see that. We can. We can see the thumbnail only. Uh, so do one thing. Just stop sharing and then again sharing. Sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now I'm sharing again. Can you see? Now, yes, sir. Now, fine, sir. The elephant is right. Now, it is okay. This is the thing I was talking about. The elephant. Just take a look at the elephant. I think uh, view the elephant for some time. We have all called it an elephant, but it is not an elephant actually. if you see the lower part of the elephant the four legs of the elephant you can see that there is this is an optical illusion in spite of it being unreal we are considering it to be real my point is this is probably art now can you see that if somebody uh, gives communicating with me it would be easier because i am not sure whether everybody can see it or not Devanjan, if you are, uh, we can see it clearly, sir. Yeah, we, we can see it clearly, sir. We can see it clearly. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me go to the new share then. Now, can we see these three ladies? The yes, yes, yes. We can see. We can see. Yeah. Definitely, they are looking aesthetic. I mean, they are looking beautiful. Yes. yes aesthetics yes. wise they are looking good right now i am just going to turn the picture and flip it vertically please see the same picture uh, sir we can't see we can't see again please double click the picture yes we can't see Uh, okay yes do yeah 
I am sharing again. Can you yes. see? Yes, yes, yes. Now we can see. So, the the pictures of these three ladies that I showed earlier. This was the actual picture. I just rotated it 180 degrees, and then it becomes not aesthetic. So my point is creation of aesthetic based on illusion. It's all illusion. I am going back to the previous picture again. This will give you an idea. This was the first picture. The same picture. This is the first one. This is looking beautiful. The same picture. Now I am turning upside down. This is the result. So this illusion has made one picture very aesthetic, another picture which is not aesthetic at all, not beautiful at all. Now, let me go to some other example of aesthetics, I should say. Can you see? Sir, we can't see. No, 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 sir. We can't see. But please uh, stop sharing and then share it again. I think it will be. It will work. Yes. Okay. Now, is it possible to see? Yes. Yes. Now we can see. Yeah. What do you see? Can somebody tell me? Sir, it's one three D ob. It it appeared like one three D object on street on 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 public place. Yeah, but definitely that is not. It yes. is a part. You can see the trees also. Yes, sir. Yes. It is meant to look like a tree, but yes. it's not something which is tree. Yes. It is like a, three, it's a street art. Street art. Yes. Right. Met, met, street art met in such in in a format where we can go with that three D illusion. Correct. Exactly. So again, this illusion has made made it aesthetic. If the illusion was not there, then it wouldn't have been so beautiful. Let me go to another or last example, I should say. Can you see it? No, no, uh, no, sir. No, sir. Please, please, if, if you can. Okay, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll yes, share it again. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, still, we can't see that. Still, still, we can't see. Now, can you see? Yes, we can see now. We can uh, see. Sir, now, just use your arrow for the next uh, object, uh, next picture. So you do not have to share and unshare and all this. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, my point is, there are two orange circles right yes actually the diameter of both the circles are the same apparently yes no i'm not apparently okay if you measure yes they are okay but they are not looking like that that is because of the surrounding gray circles okay the surrounding gray circles are bigger in the first picture, that's why it's showing. Well, I mean, the orange circle is looking smaller, but at the same time, when it is surrounded by smaller gray circles, it's looking bigger. So, again, this is an optical illusion, and that is why the, they are. The shape and the size, basically, I mean, the size basically is changing. So, we have to create illusion. I am 
trying to make my points one after the other. So we have to create illusions when we are making a film. Now, what are the elements we have where we can where we can uh, create some illusions that we need to discuss. First, we have a story. See, it might be a story of a lifetime. It might be we are making a biopic. Suppose when we are making a biopic and we are going for the longitudinal study of a person, then definitely we are compressing the time and we are trying to tell the story maybe in 90 minutes or maybe in 120 minutes. And we are picking up very interestingly, we are picking up the important events. So the first illusion that we are dealing with and which is expressed in a story or a screenplay is let me give you an example what Ray said once. If you show that uh, a person is walking by a shop once, so the basic psychology tells you that this man is passing by chance. But if you repeat this person again passing in front of that shop for another day. So the once you show it twice on screen, then people will know that this person lives nearby. So he regularly used this way and he regularly passes in front of this shop only. Now, if you show, her, show him a third time, he is passing in front of that particular shop, then definitely the audience is going to get that by showing these people in front of the shop, passing price in the film, the filmmaker is trying to say something. He is trying to relate this shop with the character and definitely there is a relationship. Am I clear about this point? So these are the kind of things that we use while we are expressing anything that is aesthetic in the screenplay. When we deal with poetry, or we deal with music, then there are certain elements that we use to express our feelings. I'll come to that one after the other. Suppose first we use index or icons. Suppose when we are talking of Charles Spencer Chaplin or Charlie Chaplin, immediately we have an idea of Charlie Chaplin. But that's not a real Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin, when he acts in all his shots, when he acts in, suppose, Gold Rush, City Lights, Modern Times, or maybe the one uh, character of Great Dictator, then he is playing a tramp. Now that particular tramp character has become iconic. Now whenever somebody even draws a line showing a ill-fitted and ill-fitted hat, a stick, a person with an ill-fitted uh, coat or jacket and another very loose pair of trousers 
and shoes and they are almost uh, separated at an angle of say maybe 120 degrees is obtuse then immediately one can identify that this is basically Chaplin. So he has made this look iconic. That's what we call icon. When in a film you are showing that somebody is using a Nokia phone, which is not a smartphone, and somebody is using an iPhone, then definitely by the phone itself, people will realize that the first man is not a prosperous man and the second man is a prosperous man. So prosperity is being iconized by elements like phone. And there are lots of other things now you can imagine. Suppose a smoker who's smoking a beer and another smoker who smokes, suppose a king size cigarette, definitely this particular uh, cigarette thing is iconizing the, the, not only the economic status, but also the social status. So when we are iconizing, then actually we are using archetypes. Everything that is archetypal for the society, we use that. The point is, the filmmaker can also break this archetype. Suppose there is a character who lives in the ivory towers, but he loves to smoke weed. So now this character is getting interesting to me. So I'm breaking the archetype and making some oddities in a character that is normally perceived to be a very prosperous man and I'm inserting certain elements which is totally contrary to his way of life and when he does that then there is a contradiction and that contradiction makes this character interesting not only interesting a kind of Dichotomy is there, a kind of a conflict is there in this man, I can express through that. So this use of archetypes, the use of different kinds of stereotypes, I should say, and iconizing them to express my feeling is a very important part of aesthetics of cinema. Then there are indexes or indices. What are the indices? Suppose I am showing a street very crowded and at the same time I am saying that everybody should maintain social distance or physical distance like in Corona. So actually what I am trying to say is they are flouting the rules. My, my first shot was this, that there's a very crowded street near a marketplace. My second shot shows one poster saying that in the time of Corona, people should be maintaining social distance. And from these two shots, the bottom line that I get as an audience is people are flouting laws. So that is a very interesting way of expressing your view by two contradicting shots. Later on, that came in Sergei Eisenstein's work, the thesis versus the antithesis finally gives you a synthesis and editing becomes montage. I mean, two successive shots which are interconnected and adversely uh, proportional, I should say, leads to a third feeling that is the synthesis of an idea.
I'll come to that later when I'll come to editing. Then again, <coughs> when we are talking about this is the indices, then the symbols. Suppose whenever I am showing the Nazi symbol in a, any European country, immediately people can relate to Hitler or maybe the Second Great War. How does it happen? Because in our social consciousness, not only individual consciousness, collective consciousness, this particular symbol is always there and as a symbol of the Nazi party or Hitler or the Second World War. Again, when we see a logo of a beaten apple, then definitely we know that it is something related to Mac. It might be a Mac, iMac, it might be a, a MacBook, it might be an iPhone, it might be an iWatch, whatever. So that's why everyone, every company, every corporate, they make logos. Now these logos or monograms actually are there to identify a big thinking or a big uh, launch, maybe a big institution with a single image and single very small image, but still it is there. We actually, a lot of time we read our book by images. Let me explain this very, uh, very fast. We are supposed to read when we are reading. So suppose I am reading Amity University. Am I reading it like this? A M I T Y. So logically it is M E T. And then U N I V E R S I T Y. That means probably university. No, I am not reading like that. I'm taking a glance and then just uh, moving my eye away. And I know it's Amity University. That is because the words Amity and the university, they are actually images to me. Just think of when you were, you were uh, reading any book, any kind of a book or a storybook might be. How can we read so fast? We are actually not reading like this. He is a good man. So H E I S G O O D M A N. No. I know that I is is. I know that H E is he. I know M A N is man. So those images are already there in our subconscious and unconscious. We are just relating to that particular image and we immediately know what exactly the author is trying to say. So here comes the role of this icon, index and symbol. Then we go to metaphors. Suppose we are showing <coughs> that somebody is going to die as in Pothe Pansen. And there was a dia, there was a small light dia, and there's a storm. So in the storm, that uh, flame is rocked, and finally the flame is off by the time Durga has passed away. So this identifying Durga's light with the flame and it's been rocked by the storm. And finally, the storm or the rain kills Durga and the this element of flame that is put off. These are the kinds of metaphors that we frequently use in cinema. So these are the way we are expressing 
our aesthetic sense in film. Suppose there are combinations of different kinds of lights, different kinds of colors, which makes you feel good. Something, sometimes it makes you feel eerie. Sometimes it makes you feel horrifying. So these are the different kinds of moods that we have. So now, when we are looking at a horror film, then we will be knowing that there will be high and low key lighting, there will be high contrast lighting and low key lighting, there will be hard shadows, and we can think of the style, the noir film, square made once upon a time in Hollywood. But another kind of uh, image which is very soothing to our eyes, which is colorful, vibrant. Then we think of a very happy and really happy nice story. And suppose sometimes we are seeing something very monochrome, very gritty, then we know that yes, it might be an action film, it might be a chase sequence, it might be a very gritty kind of a film. The interesting part is sometimes we use it just the opposite way. That means a horror film looks very romantic and very beautiful at the first. Finally, it turns extremely dark, extremely gritty. Again, a love story that can start in a very, uh, I mean, very much looking like a horror film or a, a thriller, and then it mends into a beautiful love story. So these are the lots of techniques of filmmaking where we can create our own aesthetics, because in my opinion, there is no fixed law or no fixed formula of aesthetics. There are different kinds of elements to deal with our thoughts and to express our aesthetic expression. But I don't think that there is a law or a formula that this one is aesthetic. No, I think a lot of factors combined together make something aesthetic and lack of which might lead to something which is not aesthetic at all. I think when we are writing the script, we should keep that in mind. Now writing is all about literature also. So there are elements of literary aesthetics, the how the words are written, how is it sounding really like a good literature or is it sounding like a daily normal day affair kind of a dialogue or maybe there's a kind of cynicism and sarcasm coming out of dialogue so there are lots of different ways this script and screenplay can be written in an aesthetic way and then we go to find locations and we plan the set and the art and the props. There, definitely, we take the help of the art directors, the production designers, who will give the exact color palette that you are looking for, the kind of structures, the kind of elevations and depressions that makes your mise scene, that means the Altogether, the production designing with the acting, with the movement choreography, and with the camera choreography, everything in sync. And that makes things aesthetic. Sometimes when we are showing a house of a very poverty-stricken man, then all it can be aesthetic. 
light is a very important factor there. And again, a very rich man, his house, it might not look aesthetic if things are properly not planned production designing wise. So here comes the role of the art direction. Then acting, acting itself has got that aesthetic value, which actually is contributed mostly by theatre. A dialogue, how to be, how do we deliver the dialogue, in which angle, keeping the camera in mind, keeping the light in mind, how fast should I say, how slow should I say, are we going for dubbing or ADR, I mean additional dialogue recording, or we are going for a sync sound, how am I balancing my body gestures with the voice and the body gestures also? How am I presenting myself? That again goes to the domain of this painting and sculpture. There are certain poses in our subconscious that expresses certain kind of body language that explains the character. We take advantage of that sometimes. Sometimes we break those archetypes again and create our own. That is the interesting part in acting. And then of course camera. We have lots of lenses, lots of lights. How to lit up a situation, how to use the lens, how to use the focal length. Suppose whether we are going to shoot the entire film in a shallow focus, or are we going to shoot in deep focus? If you see at Bollywood, uh, Hollywood uh, white screen, you'd be seeing a lot of depth in all frames. At the same time, when we are seeing a telephoto lens user in a uh, uh, European film, then in a Nuvalva film particularly, you'll see that the depth of field decreases. That gives you another impact. Then again, how are you lighting? Are we going for a split lighting? Are we going for a three-point lighting or a one-source lighting? Are we going for a bounce lighting for which uh, Shubhuta Mitra, our Indian filmmaker was, I mean, uh, the DOP was uh, greatly accepted and acknowledged worldwide. So are we going, which kind of a, uh, Lighting, lighting scheme we are opting for. That's also very interesting. Then again, while shooting, what exactly is the choreography? That also gives you the opportunity to be aesthetic. A particular dialogue, when it is uh, told in front of the camera, might be just at the edge of the camera and then turning and taking a light and then moving away from the camera to the out of focus or the defocus range. By the time another character comes and takes another position in the nine golden points of that aesthetic uh, rectangle. These uh, compositional things, which actually we all got from Sergei Eisenstein again, the psychology of composition, his book. So this compositional thing, in the frame, since it's a 2D frame, in the frame is very important because that also should be like a painting that expresses some aesthetic value in a cinema. Then comes the aesthetics of the costumes, the makeup, the hair. We all know how to uh, style somebody, how to fix the look. After this, we'll go for the aesthetics in editing. Lots of times, the cuts are made to be smooth. Lots of times, the cuts are made to be jerky, to give an impact. The exact content must be expressed through the editing because this is the second time, actually, you are writing the script. The first time, when we are writing the script, it was when we, we were trying to make the screenplay. Second time, after shooting, when in the, on the editing table, we are again trying to write the film. 
And here is a crucial part, not only about the storytelling, but also the storytelling definitely needs to be done on the editing table. But at the same time, while we are editing, we are keeping certain things in mind. Suppose, what are the lenses, successive lenses that we are using in the edit? I mean, there are shots of uh, shot in 85 lens and 135 lens and 50 lens of the same take, maybe, or the same shot. There are different takes with different lenses. Which particular lens is giving you the exact feeling that is needed right now? And that helps you to tell the story at the same time, make the look beautiful. Suppose in uh, normal films, uh, lensing is an element of the camera, definitely so, of making an image. But while it is coming to a 3D film, suppose, then you must remember that there is a continuity of lenses also. Because the moment you change the depth according to the lenses, immediately the 3D viewer is trying to adjust his or her pupillary reaction of the eye. Like, suppose you shoot something in 35 lens and next you are going to 135, the immediate the eye has to accommodate. Now, in a 3D film, if I do it frequently, then I get the audience visually very tired. So don't make it. While making a 3D film, if you now uh, look at the net and look at a 3D film, you'll see that there is a great gradual increase in the depth of field, then there is a gradual in decrease in the depth of field. That's not sudden because for audience to go for such sudden lensing, sudden change of lensing for two hours in a 3D film, particularly, it makes your eye pain. Now, after the editing comes the 50% of the rest of the aesthetics which comes from the sound. There are lots of things to be done in the sound, not only the voice, the dialogue, the dialogue, their equalizations, setting all parameters, cutting the highs and the lows, then putting, uh, adding the reverbs, adding the all kinds of effects, equalizing the voice properly, editing the uh, entire soundtrack. Then comes the music. This is definitely an area of aesthetics because lots of things are there in the background music that makes your emotions go haywire, emotion curve that uh, sulks and then rises. There are a lot of different things that are to be done in this sound perspective thing. Whether you are doing the sound in mono or a stereo or a 5.1 or a 7.1, maybe today uh, Dolby Atmos. So uh, all these kinds of mixing, it has got some aesthetics and some very wise designing. Otherwise, the audience won't be able to relate to the aesthetics that you are expressing. After that, we come to all kinds of effects. Effects means uh, the sound effects, the falling, and the non-sync sounds, or the ambient sound maybe how to balance all these kinds of sounds in your uh, soundtrack. That is also a very important part of handling the film sound aesthetics. So when this is done, then we go for the color correction, which is called color grading. Don't call it DI or digital intermediate because digital intermediate was in fashion when we used to shoot in films. Now we shoot digitally, mostly digitally. Some people still prefer to shoot uh, uh, on celluloid, but most of the films uh, 
shot digitally and so there is no digital intermediate it's the entire film is uh, digital what we do is color grading after shooting after editing actually and this color grading is a job of a painter definitely whatever uh, emotion i want to communicate i need to communicate it very aesthetically and that is one tool we have this color grading where we again can fix the style and the look of the film. And after that comes the CGI or the computer-generated images. This computer-generated images, be it matte painting, be it 3D modeling, be it different kinds of uh, animations, the rigging part, the making of the mesh, then uh, the animating the objects, the motion capture harness, then uh, stop motion kind of a photography, whatever is done in uh, the, the computer generated image part, that needs to be very aesthetic and that helps in the development of the film story and also the film aesthetics. Here, the choice of the colors of the matte painting and the uh, VFX, all these VFX effects is very, very important. The kind of light that we are using in this virtual camera the kind of the virtual camera positioning in case of CGI, these all are very important. So all the elements that contribute to development of film aesthetics is, are there at your disposal. The point is you have A to Z on a piece of paper. Now you have to place the alphabets in an order to write a sentence like, life is but a walking shadow. So you have all the elements at your disposal. Now you need to be a Shakespeare. In cinema, now you need to be a Sergei Eisenstein or a Jean-Luc Godard. So that is my uh, discussion on aesthetics. Now, if you please, uh, if we go through some uh, question and answering session, I think it would be very good for both of us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I have some questions definitely from the participants and, and excellent. I mean, you covered almost all aspects and elements of cinema, including mesocene, montage and many other things in, and touch to some extent semiotics as well. So excellent, but straight away, as you talked about the language of cinema, I have a straight away, I have a straight some questions or to know, I'm eager to know your observations. Yeah. That, uh, yes, uh, said so that the, uh, the first thing will come to our mind that, that cinema has changed when we transferred from celluloid to television, the language of visual language I'm talking about, because initially you have started with that. And after that, now we transport the television, though not the format, though the, the terminology we are using smart TV, but we transport into OTT. So I will come straight to the uh, uh, terms of language. And if you observed any changes as a filmmaker. Yeah, definitely. When, uh, first of all, let me discuss about celluloid. When we were shooting on the celluloid, there were some restrictions at the same time. There were some, uh, I mean, some what should I say, uh, advantages also. The advantage of celluloid uh, is the resolution that we used to get on a celluloid, maybe a 45 or a 55 camera, or maybe in an Ali 3 also. Uh, that is the depth. Now, this we haven't managed till then in a digital camera. Uh, basically, it all depends upon technical. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Please continue. Sir, please continue. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes what happens is when we are uh, talking of uh, images, then uh, you must have read in the cinematographic class that there is a, a sensitivity curve. And uh, this sensitometry of, uh, I mean, the ratio of log exposure to intensity of light. And it is a curve with reciprocity failure at the end. That means it starts with a toe 
and then there is a steep climb which is the <clears throat> basically the latitude and finally there is a shoulder after which it dies down however light you increase there is no increase in uh, log exposure so here the latitude in case of film was far more yes than what we get in uh, i should yes. say the shooting area of the curve was far more uh, greater in um, celluloid what we are than what we are getting in uh, this um, digital medium that is yes, one yes second the depth of colors i mean digital color they are they come they always come in gamuts but the spectrum that you used to get in, on celluloid i mean there are lots of shades of one particular color might be red or blue or green whatever there are lots of shades but here we are restricted in terms of shades color shades or tones then another thing is film actually gives you a depth when we are saying that we are going uh, from a 24 lens 24 mm lens to uh, maybe a 135 lens or a zoom lens the amount of blurring that happens uh, in the depth for a film does not happen with this uh, digital media but what are the advantages of the digital media first of all for films we have to have uh, we had to have uh, cans which had 400 feet um film now uh, this was costly first of all and second in any case you have to cut a shot after you have exposed your entire magazine so there were exceptions like the films of miklos yancho where yancho's films they have 20 minutes or 30 minute shot a single take but for those uh, there were customized cans and they were very big big cans i mean 2000 feet cans which was not available here of course so that was one disadvantage now you can go for a longer shot with the cards in place of cellular i mean the memory cards another thing is uh, you can go for lot of takes which we couldn't go when we were shooting in celluloid because celluloid is very costly affair so you can't just go on taking so there was the shooting ratio was maybe 1 is to 2 in my first film actually sometimes it was 1 is to 1 and 1 uh, is to 2 1 is to 3 but in a uh, digital media unnecessarily don't do that but you can go up to 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 5 but don't do unnecessarily because that also hampers the discipline uh it is always to remember that the first shot i mean in case of actors the first shot is the best shot of course because that is spontaneously given shot anyway uh so uh, there are uh, disadvantages uh, advantages of uh, the digital media now the point is when we were making films in case of preservation yes digital media has provided a lot of free space lot of uh, facilities in terms of preservation restoration of films and finally the distribution because once you shot in celluloid then you have to make cans and copies and then run with those cans etc etc uh, to different parts of the world uh, i mean to theaters but now it's possible through satellites it's very easily uh, viewed through different kinds of streaming so there are advantages and since digital cinema is in vogue today uh, i think we need to develop the aesthetics of digital cinema mostly okay yes uh, understood then you you also all, as you all uh, went through all the aspects of aesthetics of cinema now, now i would like to go into the commercial aspects of cinema yeah. now yes the commercial aspects of cinema because i know some of my students they want to be a filmmaker and also apart from the film making there are few areas where they can focus into like that if somebody don't if if somebody is considering that i will not go into that creative process rather i will go into the area where i can make myself or we can think of be one exec executive producer or in that particular area where somebody can work like a production designer what is what is your observation and what are the opportunities i mean if in in terms of commercial aspects of cinema if you can please uh, share 
first of all uh, there are different kinds of work that cinema needs it's not only about filmmaking and being a director or rather uh, a cameraman or an um, i mean actor or an editor etc they are there but at the same time to me the most important department of filmmaking is production so uh, a production uh, be he, uh, he, he might be a production manager he might be an executive producer he also might be a producer himself this is the uh, area where we really need to uh, i mean really need to concentrate because unless and until you know production it is not possible to make film it's just not possible to make film even for the filmmaker i'm saying even for the director i'm saying you have to have the theories of production in mind you have to have the structure of production in mind and also the limitation suppose you are thinking you are thinking something that you are going to make a film like avatar and you have a budget of uh, i mean not like avatar in that case what happens you have to improvise three things from the script to direction to acting to wherever uh, to editing everywhere you have to improvise things because film according to me is not about maximization film is all about optimizing optimize your resource and optimization of resource can only be learned if somebody has this experience of working in production that's a very vital part and also handle money because you have to have a clear idea what kind of money you are going to spend for which scene and from where is it coming first be responsible for the money spent be responsible to the producer because unless and until you are responsible to the producer's money then later on the producer won't be responsible for your life your career so this is very important for any human being when he is thinking of making film please keep production and commerce in mind that is the first thing second whenever you are making a project are you at all thinking whether we can sell it or not because unless and until you can sell then why are you wasting this money this money is going for waste and in any case at the same time you can not make another film the following film can be made yeah. so you have to have plans how to recover the money i know that you are not a businessman is not possible for you to uh, easily sell uh, the film that's not the thing my point is are you aware of the business you don't have to do the business but are you aware of the business are you aware what is exactly how much am i going to get from the ott and how much am i going to get from the uh, television or the satellite rights and uh, from the theaters so all all things considered suppose when we are making a film in this corona situation we are always thinking of the ott we are not thinking of the, uh, the theaters why because we have this skepticism that even if the lockdown is lifted even if everything becomes normal it will take some time for the people to gather in cinema halls so in the meantime when we are making a film we are thinking of this ott platforms we are thinking of television and we are also thinking of independent digital platforms i mean making digital platforms yes i will come to yes yes okay, uh, so have... uh, that's why we have to have these clear ideas of the commerce of the film yes yes again then i will start with one particular thing that if somebody like our students they start a short film then they have one option that is very much available for them that is youtube that is one through that they can start showing the film to others and if they consider or if they think to do something else what are the options they can avail yeah when we are making a short film we know that uh, one single short film can't be uh, shown in theater but short films have a very good market uh, in the festivals first of all when you are making a short film why are you making a short film you are trying to say a uh, something which is a fresh very new and your feeling in a very short format not only short for uh, i mean short in terms of money but also you have to think of time let me give you an example uh, why am i saying about this time 
lots of the film festival they consider uh, anything that is less than 20 minutes is a shot there are certain festivals which consider that anything that is less than 30 minutes is a shot so it is always better to make films which is shorter than 20 minutes then you can avail all festivals first second it has to be short like a professional it's not about i am making a short film so it's a very casual way to shoot no it's not that you have to be very serious about making short films because i find short making short films tougher than making normal feature film normal length feature film okay third apart from the festivals you have all these otts which are ready to buy short films particularly made by students because students come up with newer ideas that's the reason and even after that you have these uh, channels youtube uh, the channels like youtube where you you have monetized returns you can get a return out of that those those channels are monetized so look for those kind of channels and also you can get funding for next films from by making this kind of a short film that's what also very important so these are the way uh, sorry to intervene we do not have enough time so sir we, we can will, uh, okay we, we will we will take 5 minutes more to conclude thank you thank okay. you very much okay. yes okay uh, Uh, right so, okay so uh, my one one question definitely for the for uh, the uh, part of my students that if you consider your few members like your assistant directors like your uh, cinematographer like your uh, editor or uh, uh, other few members what are the virtues and what are the specialities you will look into them i mean you will look for first of all hard work yes hard work is very necessary there is no question of uh, getting into the happy mood i should say there's no rest in this uh, particular um, profession hard work is the only answer first second definitely modes of communication i mean uh, even i myself find that if i talk to somebody politely then he or she is going to uh, answer me politely and if i am a uh, arrogant then i am going to get that arrogance back so being polite and being uh, uh, i mean uh, behavior is very important because we have to uh, i mean control the entire unit of maybe 200 people and 200 people should think that they are important everyone should think that they are important and they are contributing something to the whatever is being done it's not about just coming and going and doing a routine job it's not that so you have to ignite that passion in everybody so uh, these are the three things and honesty believe me if somebody works honestly sometimes it happens everybody has a complaint that no i am not getting acknowledged i know that but believe me give your time i uh, i have grown that old uh, i also used to think at at a point of time that uh, i am working so much but nothing is being acknowledged but later i found that that helped me that uh, i mean um, whatever i went through that helped me uh, later on in my life that taught me lot of things uh, we i can say now that had uh, i would have quit if i would have quit i i would have lost lots of opportunities Okay, thank you. My last question to you: uh, That uh, what what will be your messages uh, for the newcomer, uh, for the uh, for future directors or the newcomers? It's uh, told by Godar. Film is truth, yes. short, twenty-four frames per second. It's all about truth. if somebody is truthful and honest to himself or herself definitely he or she is going to make a very good film that's it okay okay yeah, you, yes uh, yes sir yes sir yeah, we are just going to conclude the session rajesh sir once yes yes sir uh, thank you so much sir
Yes. Yeah, this is Professor Rajesh Sisodia. Yes. I am looking after the department here at Amity School of Communication. And on behalf of all the participants, uh, mostly very young minds, creative minds, and uh, very uh, learning or uh, listening from a such a vision uh, from not about uh, uh, that uh, 2010 film, Not Out, to uh, till Vitya Purush. Uh, as an actor, director, writer, uh, since last 10 years, uh, you are so active, sir, and you are uh, inspiration to a lot of people, including me also, and we all are obliged, and we are very thankful that from your busy schedule, you have taken time, and your uh, enlightening speech and your experiences will certainly going to enrich us. And once the pandemic is over and campus is open, we would like to invite you to our campus. Yes. Uh, sure. uh, please give us opportunity to welcome you at the campus. Yes, I, yes I, I, definitely, I, I, definitely, I, surely. Uh, well, he came to our campus before and after this, after this uh, pandemic, definitely he will come yeah, here. Will come and and with, with that, with that, we are going to organize one workshop. Where, where exactly we will shoot a film with Mr. Kamalesh Mukherjee, uh, Kamalda, and with our students. So Kamalda yeah. will definitely come uh, to attend one yes. workshop. And one more thing, sir, 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 to inform you, Rajesh, sir, that uh, we are going to take some of the original footages, and we, uh, I already have a discussion with him that 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 will be used for the educational purpose, where our students of uh, film and television production and mass and uh, communication that they were going to use for the editing and to learning purpose. Yeah. So we are already in discussion. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you all participants, all attendees, all faculty members outside and inside of Amity and other colleagues uh, and students. Thank you. Thank you very much for your participation. Uh, and uh, definitely we will continue with your support and with your uh, uh, coordination. Thank you. Thank you very, very much.